This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have a, a wonderful guest on here today. I'm remembering back 35 years ago, and I've done a, a few 35th anniversary tribute uh, anniversary podcasts this year for films that came out in 1982. And of course, Canada was pretty big that year because a film called Porky's came out and was our highest grossing film until Bong Cop Bad Cop came out uh, in 2006 and, and topped it. And uh, although I do not have one of the cast members on the phone with me, I do have the loved one of one of the cast members. We're going to pay tribute to Nancy Parsons, who played, of course, the the gym teacher in the film. The, the character I remember best is the gym teacher, uh, Bula uh, Ballbrecker. And uh, I have one of her daughters on the phone with me, uh, Ms. Elizabeth Hipwell. How do you do, Elizabeth? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's an honor. I'm glad to have you. Yes, your your <laughs> your mom was quite the presence in all the all the films that she's done. I I was looking through um, her resume, and some of the films are big that I haven't even seen. And then there's some films I remember right, right off where she was in them. Oh I, yeah, I, she's a memorable person. Oh yeah. Um, I, I, I got to ask, you know, um, if if you could give us any of her uh, background. Well, um, she started acting uh, just for herself in her senior year in high school. Um, she played a part in the 5th of July, and they liked her so much in the drama department, she was given a full scholarship to the Pasadena Playhouse. And this was in the early 60s. And then when she graduated from Pasadena Playhouse... She went to New York to pursue acting and got a little detoured. She met my dad, so she didn't act. And said she met my dad and she got married and she had my sister and I. And then towards the end of their marriage, she went back to school at Los Angeles City College and with the intention that she would get a teaching degree for um, drama. And You mean not for Jim? No, not <laughs> my mom was more of a driver than a walker. But yeah, so she ended, and she so summer theater there. She played Eulalie McKechnie Shin in Music Man, and I did my first theater role, and I played her young daughter Gracie Shin. So that was kind of fun to be up on stage with her. And um, she had a 4.0 there, so then they gave her a full scholarship to UCLA to their theater department, and she still thought, oh, I'll just be a drama teacher. And she ended up doing a lot of um, a lot of theater when she was there and then did the Hugh O'Brien Awards. And she was thinking, well, if I, did, if I win the Hugh O'Brien Awards, I'll get some, some money, and that will help me with, you know, living expenses for me and my daughters. And she ended up winning for Best Scene and Best Actress, and... Little, it wasn't even on her mind that the whole audience was made up of people in the industry. So there were agents, casting people, producers for theater and film, and everything. And as a result, she got her first agent, and her only agent until the day she died. And that was uh, Susan Smith, which is a really prestigious boutique agency. And um, she also then also got cast in her first equity production. Um, of the seahorse and within a month of being with Susan she got her first sad job so she was very fortunate made up for a lot of lost time um, she got her equity card and her sad her sad card within like three months of the Hugh O'Brien Awards and her first uh, TV role was on Beretta she played um, a ticket agent at a train station and um, she ended up improvising the scene with um, the lead actor um, and ended up with, he first, it first started with just like one line, but then it became an improvised scene. So that was kind of fun for her. And it just took off from there. And um, she did some theater um, for a while in, in LA that was unpaid, but then realized that she had responsibilities 
she just she decided to mostly focus on TV and film so that she can be with my sister and I more and um, be a little more secure financially because we really struggled for a long time. And um, so that's what happened. <laughs> that's the beginning of her career. Well, and, and she was definitely memorable. Um, according to uh, the internet, internet Movie Database, her first film work, role was in Lady in Red. No, her first no? that her first role is a small role, but her first feature film was uh, I never promised you Rose Garden. Oh, really? Yeah. Did that? Yeah. I don't even know if I had that listed. Either that or I missed that. Well, it was it was, and I remember her being really excited about it because she she loved Kathleen Quinlan. She thought she was just a one Kathleen Quinlan. She thought she was a really wonderful young actress, and she goes, she's going to go places. And, of course, she did. Yeah. Um, and my mom also had a scene with Susan Terrell where they, they sang um, a song um, in in the asylum and, and everything. <laughs> so it was pretty memorable for her. And then her first TV movie was a Susan Day um, called Whatever Happened to Mary Jane. Or Mary Jane Harper died. Mary something died last night. It was about a young girl who was abused by her mother and all that kind of stuff and along with a small part in that and then but I remember her first one of her big roles was was in um the one you mentioned um she played a prison warden <laughs> <laughs> the lady in red in the lady in red yeah <laughs> yeah that was a, a Roger Corman movie okay so it's like a rite of passage for actors to be in a Roger Corman movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah I guess yeah yeah, I've interviewed a few actors. I've been in Roger Corman movies. I had uh, Day Young on here last year from Rock and Roll High School, which was one of my favorite films that uh, that he produced. Oh, wow. Yeah. But uh, your mom, of course, went on to, to get quite a little bit of attention in a, a horror film in 1980 called Motel Hell, which... Uh, oh, that changed <laughs> everything for us. I mean, her, her thing was... She was so excited about the movie, but she was like, I could buy a car now, and it could be new. <laughs> so a little Honda Civic. <laughs> there you go. Last year, I had the pleasure of interviewing Terry McMinn, who was the meat hook victim from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, Terry was wonderful. And, of course, Motel Hell is a complete homage, only a little more comedically, um, to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yes, and of course, uh, Motel Hell, um, kind of, um, well, it's a horror film, but it's also kind of a satire as well. And of course, um, we see these movies, the Saw franchise right now. I don't know what it is with the pig mask that they use. And, oh, I know. Yeah, like, wouldn't they want to use a creature that's a little more intimidating? <laughs> Oh, I know. I, mean, I think even American Horror Story had a thing with a piggy man or something. Yeah. So it's, I don't know, it's a thing, I guess. I don't think they're that scary. They're kind of funny. But. Yeah. Well, of course, the first time we see your mom in Motel Hell, she scares the bejeebies out of this uh, um, couple that uh, just go wandering where they shouldn't and and. She, she makes that noise, and she has that mask on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how did she get the part for Motel Hell? Um, she auditioned for it, basically, and um, she got it. I remember there was a lot of excitement in our house when she got it because it was a, a starring role. And so uh, she... she um, got a friend of hers, uh, David Levy, who's famous for her movie Love Bug, okay. um, to help her out and, and mapping out the script and and, and with her c continuity and her acting and everything. So it was a great learning experience, but it was also a great experience because she loved Roy Calhoun. It's really wonderful to to work with him. She said, "Yeah, we lost Rory Calhoun not too long ago as well." Falling out of cancer. Yeah, Rory was in quite a lot of uh, interesting films. Hell comes to Frogtown and uh, and Avenging Angels and stuff like that. He, um, of course, uh, played the 
Oh, I guess I guess he gets into that Texas chainsaw realm with a, a chainsaw and gets in a little chainsaw battle. Oh, I he, know. He, and that was funny. It was like an homage to Star Wars. There you go. <laughs> to chainsaw at the same time. Yeah, Rory Calhoun. Uh, I don't know much about him, but he strikes me as quite a quite a hoot of a character. He, um, oh yeah, yeah. He's of course had that famous line in Motel Hell: "It takes all kind of critters to make Farmer Vincent's fritters." Yeah, and then his dying words are, "I use preservatives." <laughs> I was preservatives. Yeah, they kind of did a take on that too in um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. Whenever um, Dennis Hopper uh, ended up in a chainsaw battle against Leatherface, of course played by Gunnar Hansen, they ended oh, up wow. in, a, in a chainsaw battle. Of course, when it's coming from Dennis Hopper, you know it's serious. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, your mom played the 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 crazy sidekick to uh to uh Rory Calhoun's uh crazy mastermind if you want to call it that. Oh yeah, and they they got along swimmingly. They really got close when they were doing that movie. Um she told me a story about like one day when they were in, in makeup and everything, Rory came in looking really down and my mom was like, What's wrong? What's wrong? He said, Well, I had to take care of our neighbor's chihuahua last night, and when I walked into the den, I saw that the cat had eaten the chihuahua. <laughs> my mom was like, she couldn't help laughing, and she's like, oh my God, it's like the craziest thing, but it's, it's kind of funny in a, in, a, in a macabre kind of way. So. Must have been a big cat. I know, and a really tiny dog. <laughs> <laughs> it thought that it was a rat or something, but I remember it was, that was a story that always stuck with me because it was so funny. And she got him to laugh, too, and I think that was one, that was the core of their uh, the relationship working together was they were able to get each other to laugh and keep their spirits up and, and everything. So he was a really nice man. Yeah, and of course, they anybody that came to their motel, you know, uh, they would end up... They would end up underground with their heads polluted out of the ground, and they oh had these. Oh my god, that was a crazy scene with the tractor. And they, of course, they had the the little thing, the the little uh, swirly circle things to make them hypnotized, and their heads are bobbing. <laughs> and of course, your mom would take out their voice boxes. Oh, I know. It was so crazy. It's like it's like a B movie classic now. Yeah, I guess I got a really good Blu-ray transfer as well. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's great. Yeah, it had all kinds of extras and stuff on on it. Um, oh, awesome! Yeah. Did Did she uh, um, relay any memories about the scene where the people are are underground and the hypnotizing scene? No, but she did talk about when she had to be underground. You know, with her head in the ground and her feet sticking up. And she had to have, like, a crew person underground with her to, like, cue her when to wiggle her feet. <laughs> and, and, yeah. She said it was it was, it was was a hard scene to film, It was kind of, but it was uh, interesting. It took a long time, too, so it was kind of weird to have to be head down for, like, hours on end and, and everything. <laughs> that was funny that was when they all managed to get out of the ground and they all went after her yes yes they went after her well um uh, it's been a while since i've seen this because i know there was somebody i think it was the sheriff went after Paul Lind. yeah, yeah he, he, was, he was the younger brother yeah he went after uh rory calhoun mm-hmm. yeah so uh and then all these people they can out of the grounds, and they were almost zombified. And the attack of the living dead, yes. Yeah, and when it went after uh, Nancy, who, of course, tried to fight them off. <laughs> oh, yeah. She had her chicken bones. She <laughs> had her chicken bones. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, no, Rory, Rory Calhoun was great in it, and, of course, uh, there's other interesting folks in that, too. Wolfman Jack was in that as well. Oh, yeah. Now, that's a name right. from the past. He played the preacher. Yeah. Do you have any memories of him? Or 
I don't remember him specifically, but I remember the, the scene in the church um, because my, my mom got me a little extra role. So I got to play an, play someone, one of the first years in the church. And I think Rory's daughter was there with me. So we oh. sat together because we kind of looked like we'd be related. And um, it was it was fun. It was, uh, it was a long day, but that's you, all I remember of that. Was your sister in it as well? No, she had to go to school that day, so it was just Rory's <laughs> daughter and I hanging out all day together. Oh, I bet your sister didn't like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, she didn't mind. She was pretty shy and didn't want to be around acting for a while, which is really funny because now my sister does a lot of community theater in the town she lives in in, in Wisconsin. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, another person who, uh, Nina Axelrod, was also in that as well. Yes, and I think she met her husband on that. They ended up getting married. Um, he was one of the producers. Oh, that's a movie to meet, meet your future husband. I know. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a perfect Valentine's Day movie, Motel Hell. Oh, I know. Really? Of course, Motel Hell came out um, in 1980, and of course, uh, a lot of slasher films come out that year. Um, um, ones like, uh, of course, Friday the 13th, me notable, and then there was, uh, you know, uh, Maniac came out that year as well. And of course, you had thrillers like The Fog, and one of my personal favorite thrillers of the year, Dress to Kill, and of course, The oh, Shining. Oh yeah, that was that's a that's a classic. Uh, Dress to Kill was great, and of course, The Shining came out that year too. A lot of horror films. Come oh, out. yeah. Yeah. And, the, dec- uh, the 80s was a decade for a lot of slasher movies, like summer, the summer camp movies. and Yeah. Uh, I would have been uh, eight years old in 1980. Um, been, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I would. I would. What's that? I was 16. Oh, so you're, you're up on me by eight years. Yeah. I won't say your name over the air. Huh? I won't say your name or say your age over the air. Oh, I don't mind. I'm not, I don't feel, you know, um, weird about age or anything like that. I think I've earned it and it's fine. Yeah. Well, Motel Hell, I, I don't know a whole lot about the background, but I just want, was there any controversy over that movie or was it just a quiet release? I think it was, it was a quiet release, but it was, it was really, it became like this cult classic. And um, she's really, I, I think they show it sometimes in um, like the movies, the movie houses show it sometimes on, on Halloween and I know there was um, like my um, my aunt and uncle took my my uh, cousin to see it when it first came out, and there was a thing at the theater where people could dress in costume, and I think she wore like she wore like linked sausages around her neck or something. <laughs> and some theaters even people would treat it like a Rocky Horror and would like say lines to it um, as the movie went on and like throw things at the screen, just like Rocky Horror, like sausages and stuff like that chicken bones yeah i was at a rocky horror screening um a couple years ago on halloween Mm -hmm. night and uh it it was uh, it's the third time i've seen a a midnight screening but this was the most memorable because people were throwing toilet paper around the auditorium and writing lighting um lighting the lighter during the the rain scene and tossing toast up on the stage toast yep yep yeah, newspapers I, over their head. I showed up dressed as Tommy Wiseau. That was my first interview guest from the room. Oh wow! That's become a, a popular midnight film as well. Oh wow! I should check it out. Yeah, well, it, it, it's its reputation is it's uh, great for being a bad movie, and you'll know what I mean when you see it. Oh, sometimes it's so bad it's good. Yeah. That's what they say. James Franco is set to play Tommy in the mo- film version of the book that one of the actors wrote called The Disaster Artist. And I guess Tom- oh, okay. Tommy's called The Disaster Artist. I like James Franco. He like just does whatever he wants, and 
he'll like he even does like lifetime T V movies and yep. and the soap opera and he makes art and he's just really interesting actor. Speaking of art, huh, your mom was in some art uh, a couple of years after Motel Hell in the form of Porky's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of art. Uh, oh, Art Hinton was in that. Wasn't he a Canadian actor? Actually, it's. Uh, I, I've got to say it again. I find it so bizarre that Porky's was the highest grossing Canadian film up until Bon Cop, Bad Cop came out. Do you see Bon Cop, Bad Cop? No, I haven't. No, I, I should check it out. It was uh, half English and half French. And it's about oh, okay. it, it, it um it's about two cops, one one is uh, English, one is French, and uh, and I guess this body was found. Um, it was uh, stuck up on side up up on top of a sign. It had was thrown out of I don't know whether it was a plane. It's been so long since I've seen it. And the body landed on the sign. Half the body is in one jurisdiction, and half the body is in another jurisdiction. <laughs> Oh, wow. It's like on the border. Yeah, and, and the, the movie's pretty funny. But that was the film. It has Colm, Colm Fuhrer in it. And uh, it's a pretty funny movie. It's a, it's a cop comedy. And, uh, and uh, that was the film that uh, topped uh, Porky's for uh, highest grossing Canadian film. Wow. I'm from the New Brunswick area. Are you, are you, are you familiar with the... Uh, uh, New Brunswick, Canada? No, I'm not. But I've always wanted to go to Canada. It looks so beautiful. Well, with Porky's, um, your mom, of course, played <laughs> Coach Bula Ballbricker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, yeah. what kind of a name, huh? <laughs> I know. Ballbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, I think she makes the movie. <laughs> oh, definitely. She's She's hilarious in that movie, and you know, and she, she, no matter what she did, she always gave it her all. <laughs> yeah. She gave it a hundred percent, and uh, I think the scene in the scene in the principal's office is like a classic scene. Oh my goodness! You know what? She had to keep. This is how great an actor your mom was. She had to keep a straight face. Everybody else in there were able to laugh, and there's no way they could not could have done the scene with a straight face anyway. So here they, they were. they were really laughing at her, too. Yeah. They like, could not hold it in. And, and for those that are listening to this that uh, don't know what I'm talking about, of course, you had the scene where you had the little peephole in the bathroom, and and uh, there oh, was yeah. naked girls on the other side, and it's uh, the guys, of course, uh, are looking at the girls. And of course, one of them makes an obscene comment to uh, an obese girl to move out of the way. And of course, this alerts the girls that somebody's watching. And of course, they just the girls decide to have a little fun. And one of the fellas sticks his tongue out through that thing and gets some soap put on it. Which I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so one of the guys gets uh, real trying and sticks his penis out through that hole, and of course that's when your mom comes in and and grabs hold of it and starts tugging and tugging. And, the... and, and Bob Clark was like, "Nancy, you can't do that. That that wouldn't happen in your life. You would kill him." And she goes, "Let me do it. It's gonna work." And it, of course, it did. It was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, and of course she's sitting in the principal's office there, trying to, trying to explain her case there. Oh, <laughs> I know, to Eric Christmas. Eric Christmas, and 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 one of them goes, "We should line all these guys up." You know, have you seen this prick? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know that penis anywhere. <laughs> it has a mole on it. Oh, gee, and how your mom kept a straight face, I'll never know, because if the other actors were able to, to laugh, and they, got, they were able to get away with it. How did yep. she able to sit there with a straight face? It's just, it's acting, you know, and I remember she told me that um, Bob got it all in one take. Wow. He says, okay, I think I'm just going to use this take, but we should do a few more takes as backup. And they did, and she still was able to keep a straight face. But they, the, the shot they used was the first take. 
Bob Clark, of course, directed um, Black Christmas back in 1974, which is another yeah. Canadian classic. I've done two. Or Murder by Decree as well. Yeah. I, I um, interviewed two people from Black Christmas. It's interesting because when I do my live show uh, tomorrow night, one of those Black Christmas interviews is set to, to air tomorrow night. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've done two interviews from Black Christmas, and, uh, of course, Bob Clark went on to do Porky's. And mm-hmm. I, I, I feel bad that he, he went in, he, he had a car accident that unfortunately took his life, yeah. and I believe his yeah. son as well. Yeah, he's such a nice man. I'm, I'm sad that he ended his career on Baby Geniuses, mind you, which was not a highlight. Yeah. <laughs> but, he also did From the Hip, which I ended up working on um, as a script supervisor's assistant for a summer with John Hurt, John Hurt and um, Judd Nelson. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, which was that film again? Called From the Hip, and I think Elizabeth Perkins is in it, too, is a... Uh, she was, she'd just come off as doing About Last Night, and that was like a starring role for her um, with Judd Nelson and uh, John Hurt and, oh, gosh, and some other really good actors. You could probably find it on IMDb. We, we just lost John Hurt as well. Oh, I know. He's so nice. Such a, such a good man. Yeah, he, he, of course, he's uh, famous for playing the chest-bursting uh, victim in Alien. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And Harry Potter as well, the wand salesman. Oh, that's right. I forgot he mm-hmm. was in Harry Potter. Yeah. And, of course, Judd Nelson, famous for The Breakfast Club. Oh, and Elephant Man, which is a big one for John Hart. Yes, Elephant Man. Yes, he was in that as well. Yeah. He did that right after Alien. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, um, Porky's. Now, when, you're, when your mom got that the part for Porky's, um, was it just a standard edition? How did she go about getting that? She auditioned as well. Well, first, I think they, they sent the script to her to see if she'd be interested. So it was like a little higher up than just auditioning. And then, then she went in just to read as a formality. Okay. So I think they really wanted her, but, um, she had to audition against a few other people. I don't know who, and um, and then she got it. And that was another another big role for her. Well, you got we got to know that poor Wyatt Knight will never forget her. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I he like that way as well. A few years ago, I I didn't know he's gone. Yeah, yeah. He had um, brain cancer. I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he that that final scene in the movie, of course, where your mom tackles him. It's like he's got it. It's him. Yeah, <laughs> Try, I know that penis anywhere. <laughs> she tries to pull his pants pull down. His pants down. Your mom must have been and must have had a great sense of humor. Uh, yeah, she loved those guys. That used those young actors. She always called them the boys. Yeah, she used to come over a lot um, to our house and and everything for meals and because you know Wyatt and Sarah went to drum school together at the um, American Academy okay so they were close friends even before they got porgies and um, also Scott Columbia he used to, yeah he was in um, Caddyshack a lot of social things with him as well do you know the story of how Scott Columbia got uh, porgies no I interviewed Cindy Morgan on here back in 2015. Of course, Cindy was uh, Lacey Underall in Caddyshack. Oh, wow. And uh, Lacey was wonderful, and uh, she was re- recalling that she got the script for Porky sent to her. And she was kind of appalled with it and didn't want to do the movie. Um, but Scott Columbia came across the script. I don't know whether it's in her dressing room or whatnot, but he got hold of the script <laughs> He decided he was going to try it. Yeah. He used to have a lot of parties at his house that we would go to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tried to He's reach, a nice man. I tried to reach out to get Scott on here, but I, I've been unsuccessful so far. But um, mm-hmm. what, 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 um, what's he like? Well, I, I haven't seen him in a long time, but he was always just, a really nice guy. In fact, I took some acting classes with him, and 
and he was just very, very nurturing, very kind and, and sweet and also really good looking. I remember having a crush on him when I was a teenager because he's such a, but it was like, he's just a really good person. All those guys were great. I really liked them all. Yeah, well, of course, uh, um, Dan uh, Monahan, of course. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 and Kim Cat, Kim Cattrall in that as well. This was pre Police Academy for her, and of course pre Sex in the City. Oh Who, yeah, who'd have known she was going to go as far as she did? Oh, I know. Well, she ended up doing some theater too, and in, in as I think she also went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah, and of course uh, Art Hendel in this as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any stories about him? I never really met him, but he's the one I met, not Art Hansen. Art Hindle is the Canadian actor. Mm hmm. So, but he seemed like a nice man. I only saw him from afar. Okay. We mostly um, mingled with the boys from the movie. And Alex Karras was in that as well, of course, was in mm -hmm. famous football and his wife. Yeah. Yeah, he was also in Blazing Saddles, played uh, Mongo. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the actor who played the other coach to Art Hindle in the first Porky's. Okay. I don't remember his name. But he's, he's, been a, he's a big Broadway star. There's a lot of theater on Broadway. And of course, Susan Clark played an interesting character named Cherry Forever. <laughs> Cherry Forever is the hooker, <laughs> the prostitute. Oh, these these names they come up with. What was oh, I, I wonder if that was Bob Clark that came up with those? I think so because he he wrote the script. So, and of course we can't forget Chuck Mitchell, who of course played Porky. Porky, yeah. And Tony Gagnos played Meat. Yeah, and of course yeah. it ended up spawning two sequels as well: Porky's Two yeah. the Next Day and Porky's Revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any stories uh, uh, regarding those two films? I know your mom kind of found romance <laughs> in, in the Porky's third Revenge. one, yeah. yeah. And they they beautified her. I think that's the picture. There's a picture on her her Facebook page um, with wearing the makeup for that. She looks really pretty. She's a really beautiful woman, you know. Yet, yeah, despite all the, the all the abuse, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, she played a lot of, like, characters that were kind of odd characters, but um, she was really pretty. So, yeah, but yeah. they always did the makeup to make her look more harsh. Yeah, it's interesting, rough. too, because another movie that she did where her character was kind of looked upon harshly was uh, Ladybugs. Oh, I never saw that. I think I was in college or something. And she did that. It was with Rodney Dangerfield. Rodney Dangerfield. She played Coach yeah. Annie, and of course, the plot had yeah. uh, the late Jonathan Brandis in it. And and Rodney um, is under pressure with his job to make this soccer team work, so he dresses uh, Jonathan Brandis up as a girl so they could <laughs> win. And of course, oh yeah, one of the opposing team's coach was Coach Annie, played by. Uh, by um, Nancy Parsons, and she comes up, and she gets right gruff with Rodney, and she goes, your team's going to get crushed. And Rodney goes, so you're going to play too. I feel so bad I haven't seen it. Now I've got to make myself see it, make myself figure out which pieces I haven't seen and go see them. Yeah, Rodney threw a lot of insult jokes at her. I'll tell you that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's I just comedy. Yeah, well, I, I felt bad for your mom because I, I, oh, I know. Yeah, because um, I kind of look at because, you know, a person's self esteem is important, but your mom struck me as somebody who was so confident from a comedic standpoint. She was able yeah. to play it off so well with her head held, held high. She got the yeah. humor. She was, she was the butt of a lot of jokes and some things. It was a little hard sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it's just the job, it was the comedy. So that's that's just how it is. You know, she didn't take it personally. Did you? Did she have any stories about uh, working with Rodney? You know, I was in college at that time, so I didn't really hear a lot of stories. I'm sorry. 
You know, he said he was, he's a very generous, nice man. That's all I heard. I heard he got no respect. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, Adrian Barbeau on here in 2015. She related a story about the no respect thing. She said, uh, he may have said he got no respect, but when I showed up on set for Back to School, there was a line of women outside his trailer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I remember the morning when I heard the news that Rodney had passed away, So, because I've always mm. liked him. Yep. But uh, your mom was in some films I have not seen. I'm going to bring them up. And these are okay. films that are well made, like well known films, but for whatever reason, I have not seen. Actually, this one here I have seen, but I just don't remember what your mom was in it. It's been a while since I've seen it. Is Where the Buffalo Roam? That was with Bill Murray. Yeah. Of course, I it ended never up. I saw it. Yeah, that, that was based on the Hunter S. Thompson novel. Of course, it went on to uh, Terry Gilliam, of course, made Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, which gained a massive cult following over the years. I love Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp. But yeah. um, where the Buffalo Roam was not bad either. And um, I, you don't know where your mom was in that, huh? Wasn't she like a ticket taker? Or, or she worked in a bank. Oh, did she? I think in it, yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's been a while for, since I've seen that. I don't have that on Blu-ray yet. I, I think even... she was excited to be doing it because of who the director was. Okay. And then, of course, there's Honky Tonk Freeway. Yes. Now, that I have not seen. I never seen. saw that either. Oh, you haven't seen that? Okay. Now, this one I should have seen, but I haven't. I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen it. It's Sudden Impact, Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. That one she loved working on. She said Clint Eastwood was awesome. And, like, like people, the people who work for him are very loyal to him. And he keeps a very quiet set and is just very low-key when he's directing. And um, she's, she's, a, you know, she's a trivia question on Trivial Pursuit because of that movie. Oh, really? Yeah. The question is, who is the actress? that played a villain in a Clint Eastwood movie and held a gun on him and got away with it without being killed. And that's Nancy Parsons in Sudden Impact. <laughs> oh, wow. Playing the fishmonger. Now, Sudden Impact, if I remember correctly, that is that one of the Dirty Harry movies? I think it may be. I think it, it may be. And, yeah, she's the only one in a Dirty Harry movie to pull a gun on him and not be killed. Yeah, because um, I know there was four or five Dirty Harry movies. Um, I'm, they're jumbled in my mind right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know whether Sudden Impact was one or not because I haven't seen it, but I, I do know that that is a, a film associated with Clint Eastwood, so uh, I'm ashamed to say that I have not seen it, but, um, but I had to write it down here because your mom was listed as being in it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's streaming on something. Did she no. go? Did she go ahead and make his day? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> he actually got intimidated by her or his character. So that's that's a new one for Dirty Harry. Yeah. So it didn't involve a hole in the bathroom wall. No, 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 no. Could you imagine Clint Eastwood doing that? <laughs> oh God! No, no, no. He's he's a little higher caliber, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that would have given him a reason to be intimidated. But, yeah, she, she loved working on that movie. She and, really did. And Clint's still working today, like 85 years know. old and still directing movies. Uh, just mm -hmm. did Sully last year. You know, um, still working. Another mm -hmm. one that's listed for her is, um, and again, I haven't seen this either, but I'm familiar with it, is Steel Magnolias. Oh, yeah, yeah. She had a smaller role in that, but and part of it was because she had worked with the director before on um, a movie he did called Pennies from Heaven. Okay. And he remembered her, so he just requested her for um, for uh, for Pennies, not no, for Steel Magnolias. And uh, she ended up working ten weeks on that movie, but most of the time she sat around waiting. But she really bonded with like BB. B.B. Bash and Anne Wedgworth. They kind of hung out the whole time together. 
She was in Pennies from Heaven? Yeah, she played, she's in one scene with Christopher Walken, and she's kind of like an old prostitute in the bar. And that was in the scene where he does his whole dance number. Well, I mean, her opposite, Christopher Walken. You know, I yeah. looked it up. It was Wikipedia. I looked up your mom's credits, you know. I'm, this mm-hmm. must be Internet Movie Database. You might be going off of here. And I didn't look on that because usually I expect uh, Wikipedia to, to, to have oh, everything. IMDb is a lot more up to date. Oh, okay. Because I think they take some credit down from, from SAG so they can keep keep up with what people are doing. Wow. So, yeah, Penny is from Heaven. That was of Steve Martin and, uh, and, uh, was it Bernadette Henry? Was Bernadette, it? Bernadette, uh, Peters. Bernadette Peters, that's right. Because they were yeah. both in The Jerk together. And of course, Jessica Harper was in that as well, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, she got to work with Christopher Walken. Now, what was that oh, like? Oh, man. For her? She loved that. She was just glowing when she was doing that. She's like, just, you know, it was like, she just loved it. She loved working with him. She said he's a really nice man, very generous and very creative. Like he sort of would improvise with her to get re- to get her to react, and she just loved it. Your mom did a lot of improvising, did she not? Sometimes it would it would happen, but it, sometimes she would just take her cue off of someone else. Like when she did Beretta, Robert Blake, like started improvising their scene even though she only had one line she turned it into a whole scene with her and so she just went with it i remember uh weird al yankovic once said that uh he was asked whether he ever improvised and he said he can't do it but he said he admires comedians that are able to do it and um yeah yeah because sometimes that can be hard to act off of too when you're well when when she did it with Beretta, it was extra scary because it was the first bag job. Yeah. So she was like, uh, is this okay? And she goes, you know what? I'm just going to go with my gut and do it. And that took a lot of guts for you having your first professional job yeah. in TV to do that. And, but it worked out. So. And then, of course, another uh, film I got listed here. I've actually done an interview from this one with uh, Ronnie Cox. Uh, a film called Loose Cannons. Oh, yeah, yeah. I never saw it, but I remember her doing it. Yeah, it was Dan Aykroyd and Gene Hackman. Oh, wow. I know she, she also did another one with Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure you can find it on IMDb. You know what I'm doing now is I'm actually uh, going on IDB. <laughs> Because I have a feeling that Wikipedia was not quite as up to date. No, they aren't. Cause they don't like renew things. They don't make changes and stuff. Yeah, because I, you brought up a lot of names of films that I did not know that your mom was in, and they weren't listed. I'm sorry, I'm not more informative. No, no, don't worry in about the 80s, it. The eighties, which was her busiest time. Yeah. I was in college, so I was kind of in a bubble, you know. Yeah. Oh, gee, she did have a lot of credits down here. Yeah. A lot of TV. Oh, yeah, Beretta is listed as her first. And American Raspberry. Mm. That's listed. I never promised you Rose Garden listed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they they had um, Lady in Red listed as her first. Oh, no, that was was way after. I guess. She also done... Charlie's Angels. Before. Yeah, I just Lady saw Fred. that here too. What was what was it like for her to do Charlie's Angels? Oh, uh, she said it was it was pretty wild. It was a it was her first bigger role on a TV show because mm-hmm. she actually played like a murderous masseuse <laughs> <laughs> named Zora. Yeah, <laughs> but she said she really liked working with um with Cheryl Ladd. Cheryl Lab was very, very generous and very, um, just very sweet person. And because my mom had to basically like try to smother her with hot towels in the, in the massage room. <laughs> but she said it was, it was a good experience. My mom always seemed to have good experiences on things. Yeah, lo- looking down through. Yeah, she played what they call the head nurse in Where the Buffalo Roam. 
Uh huh. She played a lot of nurses and okay. prison matrons. And Alice the Teller in Honky Tonk Freeway. So she did play yeah. a teller in that. Yeah. And Harold's mother in Smokey Bites the Dust. <laughs> Pennies from Heaven, they list her as the old whore. That old whore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom had to have a good sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It was worth it for her to work a little bit with Christopher Walken. So she was just like, okay. <laughs> I don't care if they call me the old whore. Yeah. I have to work with Christopher Walken, so every, everything's good. And she's listed as being in Night Court. I loved that sitcom back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, I think she played a bailiff. Okay. Wow. Is this one episode? Oh, the one she did with Whoopi Goldberg was Homer and Eddie. Homer and Eddie, yes. Yeah. So that was with Whoopi Goldberg and, and Jim Belushi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Star Trek The Next Generation TV series. Oh, that one she loved. That was a big one for her. And I still hear from fans about that. Yeah, Trekkie, Trekkie people, and uh, she also got her own trading card with with her picture of her um, character on it, and it started out as a smaller role, and they liked her so much they kept on increasing her dialogue. So every, I remember I was with her, and every night the messenger would bring over a new script with more and more dialogue. She was getting all these long speeches, and. Because they liked her so much. They thought she was such, doing such a great job. And she goes, this is really hard to memorize. It's like a lot of techno speak about things that, that aren't really existing in real life. But it was all having to do with outer space and, and everything. But she just loved it, especially working with um, the guy who played Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart. Yeah. She goes, they, they got along swimmingly. Like, in between takes, they would, like, quote Shakespeare to each other from, like, Richard the Third and and uh, Othello and just they just they'd like enact scenes from the Shakespeare. It was really a great experience. What was your what was what was Nancy like as a mom? What was it like growing up with Nancy as a mom? Um, she was very unique. She wasn't like um, a conventional mom. And uh, we struggled for the beginning, you know, when she was first starting out as an actor and everything. And um, But she always kept in mind that we were there in the background. Um, and she was very protective and very, um, but very open-minded when it, it, it came to life stuff. She exposed us to a lot of... Um, different cultures and different kinds of people. We would even be able to go to some of the older people's parties as long as, you know, it was okay and safe for us. And so we got to mingle a lot growing up. So I think it allowed us to become very, um, very much individuals and be okay with finding our own paths in life. And my mom always really encouraged that encourage creativity and um, intellectual pursuits. And, you know, she had her mom faults, but they weren't, you know, they weren't outlandish. It was more the kind of thing being a rebellious teen and going, telling me to brush my teeth, telling me to brush, you know, brush my hair, you know, things like that. Or don't tell me what to wear. But, you know, I think she's a very unique person. And I think a lot of people sense that, like a lot of my friends always wanted to be around her because she would really listen and really be present and treat them like people and not like just kids. She was, a lot of people wanted to know her. Did she have any favorites of her own movies? Um, well, of course, you know, she loves Star Trek Next Generation, which is a TV show, but of the movies she worked on, she really loved working on The Doctor with William Hurt. Okay. She played a smaller role in that, but she just loved it. She loved working with um, Ren Haynes. Okay. She directed it. And um, that was one of her favorite things. And um, I'd say movie was 
the doctor and the TV show was Star Trek Next Generation. Those were her top favorites. You know, I was just looking your name up here on the Internet Movie Database. You've done a, a little bit of stuff on here. Of course, it says you were a fan in Porky's Revenge. Yeah, but it was a small, small part. I was, I was like, barely an extra, you know? It was more like just being there with Mom kind of thing, and it, it helped me get my SAG card. Yes. I just dabbled a few, in a few things. I'm more into visual arts now. And you were uncredited at at first sight with Val Kilmer and, and Mira Servino. Yeah, real small stuff. I love Mira Servino. I watched her the other night in Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. I think she's just oh, a yeah. hoot in she, that. She's great. Yeah. And uh, Drunk Boat as Mother Number 3. Yeah, one line. <laughs> yeah. But it was, it was really nice, though. I was requested for that, so I didn't have to audition for that. Yeah, so um, so what I'm going to ask about yourself. What what is uh, your life like now? Um, well, now I'm mostly pursuing visual art. So I live in Chicago and I have my own art studio uh-huh. and um, I am just starting to do some exhibits and uh it's just like a second act kind of thing for me. Okay. So, so I'm t- single. So. So so do you do you art yourself? Yeah, I'm mostly self-taught. Okay. So, but I love doing research. I'm always like looking up how to do things, and some people have taught me on along the way as well. But I've never went, formally went to art school or anything. Well, you know what? Sometimes, you know, uh, that's how you do it. You self-learn. You find ways oh, to yeah. do stuff. Yeah. But you got your own exhibit going. Uh, that's promising. Yeah, I'm taking part in a, a group exhibit on um, March 17th, 18th, and 19th. Okay. So. I need to ask you, what's your favorite of your mom's films? Huh. I'll start with TV shows. I really liked her in The Pretender, which was one of her last roles before she had to um, go move because um, my sister took care of her. The Pretender was a really good TV show, and I also liked um, Star Trek Next Generation. But if her, her film roles, huh. Well, I think she's a comic genius in, in Porky's. Yep, I agree. Yep. And she was really good in The Doctor. The doctor was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They're all different. Like, she is, I mean, some movies would be like B movies, but she was really good. Yep. She would treat it like she was doing Shakespeare, you know? She would never look down on a role while she was doing it or anything. So, and I think that's what set her apart, is that she never judged it. Yeah. And, um, like, Lady in Red, she's really wonderful in that. And, um, gosh. Oh, and I never promised you Rose Garden. Yeah. That was really good. So it's hard to say. I know I'm not giving you a good answer, but... Oh, you're you're doing um, fine. That's just what I, I wanted. a lot of respect yeah. for her. A lot of respect for her as an actor. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, she left us. And, uh, I know, so young. January of uh, 2001... 57 years old or 58. Was was it diabetes? Well, it was congestive heart failure. Okay. With some complications from diabetes, but I think it was the congestive heart failure that was the big one. Yeah, but... That, that was a terminal illness, so... Well, that that, that is unfortunate, uh, but I'll tell you, she's definitely remembered very, very well, especially right here. Oh, I know. The fans are awesome. I once in a while hear from people on Facebook... Mm-hmm. And because um, that's how people contact me, I think they look up my name or something, and they also find I'm the admin for her page. Mm-hmm. So I hear from people through that, and so and even like when IMDb had the message board, which it doesn't now, but I used to hear from people on the message board as well. So why don't they have the message board anymore? I think they recently took it down because there were getting some people who were trolling on it. And oh. some people were saying really awful things about the actors and 
you know, it just wasn't productive. That is pretty pathetic, isn't it? Of it? Yeah, I agree. That is pretty pathetic. Like, oh, I know. I, I re- I've read a few of those, and they say things like about with the women's weight and about just awful stuff. And I'm like, well, I can see why they've abused it. Some people abused it, and it took away from the positive stuff that some people were, were putting for us. Yeah, like we're doing right now. This is yeah. this is positive. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you, you know, like she was part, like like I said, when Porky's was the highest gross in Canada. I find that funny for Canada. <laughs> that was oh, high. I know. It's so funny. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, other good movies, too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, I, I I haven't seen Porky's in a long, long time, but I, I'll never forget your mom. I think your mom, to me, was the selling point of that movie. Oh, definitely, definitely. And, and same with uh, Motel Hell. I mean, I don't remember a lot of the other actors. I remember Rory Calhoun, and I remember your mom. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I feel sad that, that she has left us, you know, but um, I, I think that you, I, I'm, I don't know your sister. I am going to reach out to your sister, but it certainly sounds like you've turned out really, really well. Oh, thank you. I try. Yeah. You probably, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you get some of your artistic talent from your mom. Oh, yeah, and probably from my dad as well, because he, he was a visual artist. So. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, I will but. reach out to your sister. Oh, great. Awesome. Yep. And I'll let her know that I was chatting with you. And, uh, and uh, like I said, when this is ready, I'll send it to you. Just be patient on it, because it'll probably be, be a little while, but you, oh, will, you, you will get it. But uh, here today, we are celebrating Nancy Parsons and her uh, film Legacy, and what I would consider an underrated comedic genius. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I think you... You've, you should be very, I know you are, very proud that she was your mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't make you cry. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> uh, don't don't, wor- don't worry though. about it. I, I'm, I'm, it's, all, it's all good. I'm, I'm oh, very yeah. proud to have gotten hold of you and be able to do this tribute, and I'm glad you were able to come on to, to do this. Yeah. Yeah. She sacrificed a lot for us, and she's a good person. Yeah, well, I get that sense, and I think I yeah. think that she uh, she was very confident, considering uh, so, some of the roles and some of the harshness. I'd say your mom really beat the odds, and she really shined through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're closing in on an hour here, and I got I gotta say this has been a, this has been a pleasure and an honor. Oh, mine as well. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I will send the stuff out to Facebook for it to you whenever the, uh, whenever the time is good. And uh, I will definitely bid you a great day. You as well. Thank you so much. And again, we're celebrating the great, the wonderful, the talented, the comedic genius, Nancy Parsons. Right? Yes. Yeah, awesome. I was waiting for you to call. <laughs> Come in there. I'm sorry. I thought I was like, you spaced it the fuck. <laughs> no, yeah. Sure was. Well, okay. Well, I bid you a good day. You, you have yourself a wonderful day, and you keep the visual arts coming, and great luck with your exhibit. Oh, you, you, good luck to you as well, Greg. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.